Hello everyone and welcome to another Oracle Hospitality Symphony POS tutorial. Today we had a request from Shamir where he needs some help to add some package items. He has a $100 package where guests can choose three appetizers and three drinks and another $150 package where customers can choose unlimited food and drinks. So I made a little PowerPoint presentation. I know who uses PowerPoint anymore, right? because I wanted to discuss the different options we have. We have several different options the way we can approach this. So the first option would be to add them as menu items and condiments. Now I'll warn you, all of these options have advantages and disadvantages. So for the menu items and condiments approach, we can limit the number of items they can add, meaning three appetizers and three drinks and unlimited for the other one but we will have to enter all the items together. When we ring in the package, we'll have to know which appetizers they want and which drinks they want. And later on, we cannot edit them. So for the unlimited package, it doesn't work very well if the customers want to add items later on. We have to tell them, okay, what do you guys want? And then enter it all at the same time. Another option would be to just add menu items and we will add priced menu items for the packages and $0 menu items for the appetizers and the drinks. Now we can enter as many items as we need and it's super easy to program and maintain, but we cannot limit the number of items for the $100 package, meaning we cannot tell the system only order three appetizers and three drinks. So we'll have to rely on the servers and bartenders to pay attention and not offer more than they should. Another option is with combo meals. We can limit the number of items with this one, but we have kind of the same disadvantages with the menu items and condiments where we'll have to enter all the items together and we cannot edit them once we send them. It's also more complicated to program, so I don't know about this method. And the fourth method is to use fixed priced meals with a course masking. Now, this is a not very common way of programming menu items. I've seen it used maybe once or twice in my life and we can enter the items as needed, but this method is so complicated to program and maintain that I'm not even gonna attempt it. And after weighing the pros and cons of each method, none of them are perfect for sure, but I think the best way and the smoothest way we can do this without having issues is gonna be with the price menu items and zero dollar menu items. So we're gonna have to train the servers very well and ensure they do their job correctly. So let's jump into EMC and see how we would design our screen. And here we are in EMC. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go to page design and kind of take a look at my screen where I'm gonna add them. So we go under the configuration tab and then click page design. And I'm gonna open my transaction page here and change the aspect ratio to 16 to nine. And this is my food area. So over here, I do have breakfast appetizer, soup salads, and I do have the specials area, which we don't really use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this packages, and then I'm gonna use this particular area of the screen. And the way I envision this is having two different screen lookups. So I'm thinking maybe a bottom screen lookup here, and then I'm gonna copy this one and paste it. And then I have another one, maybe a little bit bigger. And then the way I envisioned it is to have these in two different colors. So this one at the top, it's gonna be here and then have two buttons at the top for the package menu items. And I can add one here and make it a little bit wider so that it fills the screen. And then another one here. And then I would have my $100 package and my $150 package here, just like that. And then I'll change the color slightly. And I wanna put the appetizers in this particular slew, and then I'll put the drinks in this bottom slew. But if I take a look at my values here, I don't really have extra screen lookups. So I'm gonna find a nice little space area, uh, probably scroll a little bit further down, maybe 70 and 71. And then I'm gonna call these slews package apps, package drinks. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this close page design and we're gonna go to the descriptors and here under slew names we're gonna open menu items so I'm gonna scroll down to the 70s area where I said I'm gonna add mine package 
apps and you can call this one bytes or whatever you want to call it package drinks so i'm gonna save this and now i have my two screen lookups now the reason why i closed page design is because i have to either reopen it or refresh it because i'm making changes over there so it's not gonna work so i'm gonna reopen my transaction screen go back to my packages and then let's change the color of this one let's make this one cyan color and then i'm gonna go to the advanced area change the font size make it a 20 font and then make this one a different color maybe a green and then also make it 20. so now we can see them better in their different colors so we can differentiate them and this one will be my menu item so i'm gonna change it to package apps and this one will be for my package drinks and in order for them to be differentiated i'm also going to change the way they look so we can give them a different color um, maybe this cyan color just like that and then for the drinks we can probably leave the drinks this nice aquamarine color and for the layout this one is kind of squished and we're not going to have a ton of drinks so why don't we make it a three by six and then make this one maybe five by six. So they're kind of even in size. And I like how that looks. We have our appetizers up top and then we're gonna have our drinks down below. Now we can choose to have these with tabs. If we don't want the tabs, I'm just gonna change it to grid. And then I'm gonna change this one to grid as well. And I think the screen looks really nice. So now what we need to do is, first of all, we're gonna need to create this menu items that we're gonna attach here, which are gonna be the packages, and then we're gonna have to create all the menu items for all of the different $0 items. And I'm gonna close page design, and I'm gonna open menu item maintenance. And we have to click a quick search just to populate the database. And let's find a spot to add our two packages. Maybe we have a specials area. These are entrees. We do have specials here, so we can use this. So I'm not gonna take one of the specials that we already have programmed, but I'm gonna move it further down. Um, but I am gonna use them as a template. So I select this one and I'm gonna send it to probably 8100, maybe even 8500. So that will leave me plenty of space between these specials and the next category here, which is sides. And then I'm gonna call this one $100 package. And then for the price, I'm gonna enter $100 and then click OK. And now our menu item has been added. And let's check the definition really quick of it. And this is a food item, which is fine. And it appears in the special slew. We don't want it to appear on any screen lookup because we're gonna hard code it to that button. And then we can check the price really quick and it's $100, everything is good. So I'm gonna save this. And now I'm gonna use it as a template and add my $150 package. And this one will cost 150. Now, the way we're gonna have this printing, you and you're gonna have to decide on this one. The way I'm thinking about it is just to print it on the Expo printer. So then the expediter knows that a package like this was rung up. So that would be another way for the kitchen to see that somebody actually paid for these packages just in case somebody gets any funny ideas of offering free food to their friends or something. So if the expediter sees a $150 package come through, they know that that particular table is okay to send them whatever they need to send them and for the $100 package as well. So if I take a look at my food items here, and we can take a look at the print class. So it does print in the expo, which is perfect. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is. And now I'm gonna close this. And the next thing we need to do is we need to add all of those menu items, the appetizers and the drinks. Now you can choose to add brand new ones, or you can choose to add another definition to the existing ones and price them at $0. Now, as with the choice that we made earlier, there are advantages and disadvantages to each one. Uh, on the one side, the advantage is that your reporting will be cleaner. You only see the item once. Let's say that somebody orders one of your appetizers and I can scroll all the way up to see where the appetizers are. 
So we have them just below breakfast. Let's see salad soups here. So if you want to see your tomato bruschetta only once in uh, the reporting, then you can add a definition number two, which is the way I'm going to go as well. But if you want to see them separate and you even maybe give them a separate name, like tomato bruschetta package, maybe they're a smaller size or maybe there's a difference between the ones you currently have and the ones that you're going to be offering for the package. For me, I think having no difference between what they get is a little more genuine and the guest will appreciate that. So I'm just going to go for the dual definition route. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my master records here and I'm going to select all of them and you can select them all by dragging on this corner or by holding control and shift on your keyboard and then clicking the last one. So these are all my appetizers and then I'm going to click insert. We can add a definition number two here and then we can also create the price for it. So we're going to say specific price and this one will be priced at $0. Now you can generate a template for one of them and then use the template for that one for the rest, but I'm just going to leave it like that and then just click OK. And then I'm going to confirm to add all of these definitions. And if we go to the definition records now, we can see that we have definition number one and definition number two. Now, luckily for me, most of the items just have the food item menu item class. Um, but we can take a look at which ones do not. So the jumbo wings, they do have the required wing sauce. So a keyboard shortcut that I use a lot is I select F3 on one of the categories up top, which is copy and then F4 is paste. So basically by clicking in this field, hitting F3, F4, then you can just copy paste uh, that particular definition. And I'm going to copy paste this menu item class as well and then copy paste this one as well because it's different. Uh, now other items that we need to change are going to be for all of the main levels, all of the sub levels and the screen lookups. And another thing we can do just to see those uh, definition number two records is I can go here and in my filter I can select definition sequence number and I'm going to enter two and then I'm going to say filter now. So now I see only definition number two items which are the ones that I just added. So we need to change the screen lookup for all of these items. And remember, these will go to position 70. So these are going to be for package appetizers. And then you can F3 and hold F4 all the way down. So now I change all of these menu levels, select all, hit F3 once, hold down F4, same thing. And then this one goes the same F3, hold down F4. And then for the menu item classes, I'm going to give them the menu item class of food. Jump over that one and then F for the rest. So I got all of these now and I'm going to go ahead and save. And now there is another decision we have to make regarding all of these zero dollar menu items. Do we want them to print only in the kitchen or do we want them to print in the guest check? Because if we do want them to print only in the kitchen and not appear on the customer check, then they're going to get a receipt that just says $100 package without the details of what they had. But if we do want them to print them, we can just leave them alone. I will have all of my items print on the guest check because I think that's perfectly fine. They order a package and they pay for it and then they see all the details of the different items that they have. Uh, but if you do want to change that and only have them print in the kitchen, then you can go to your print class override and then you can select a kitchen only one. So for example, you can choose this one kitchen only or expo only or something like that where you want these appetizers to only print in the expediter. And if you don't have a kitchen only or expo only, I can show you how my print classes are programmed. I can just double click the expo only. So you only select the expediter order device, which in my case is order device number one, and then you deselect print on customer check, print on guest check. So it only prints in the journal. So a print class like this will not show on your customer receipts. So I'm going to leave mine the way they are and I'm going to go and add definition number two. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my drinks and I'll be right back. 
And now that I've added definition number two for all of my drinks, you can see them starting here at 20,000. I have my appetizers here and my drinks here. Again, I'm using this filter to only show items that have definition number two present. Uh, I have to add menu item class and then main level, sub level and the slew. And I wanted to show you another cool way to make all these changes all together. So I'm gonna use my control and shift and then click on the last one to select the entire row. And then if you do right click on this end, you're gonna see bulk edits. So we can make bulk edits for a couple of the items here. For example, we can bulk edit the menu item class. So I'm gonna select this and then I'm gonna change the records too. And I'm gonna select from my dropdown and look for my non-alcoholic beverages and it is right here and then you have two buttons be careful with this one that says apply to all records make sure you click apply to selected records you don't want this to apply to your entire database and then once you click that you can hit ok and i changed all of my menu item class at the same time and then we can also change the slew like this right click screen lookup and then select and we're going to go to our screen lookup number 71 Click OK and apply to selected records. Now, unfortunately, there is no bulk edits for main level and sub level. So for this one, we're still going to have to use my F3, F4 combo. So I click F3, it copied the thing above and then I just hold down F4 and it goes all the way down. And then I can do the same F3, F4. And now I have all of my changes done. And all we have to do is click save and all our prices should be at zero and we can see definition number one and two here so definition number one is the regular priced one definition number two is the zero priced one and now the one last change we have to make is in page design now we already linked the screen lookups so we shouldn't have to mess around with the menu items too much because we already have these connected to 70 and 71 but we didn't link these guys so we're gonna have to make sure we do that we go to menu item and then select, and then we're gonna take a look at $100. So I'm putting the name here to use it as a search, and I found the package, then I click OK. For this one, I'm gonna do the same menu item, and then click the little arrow, I'm gonna put a dollar sign in 150, and I found the other package, and I click OK. And now both of my buttons are programmed. All I have to do is click save. And now let's jump to the workstation and see how our screen looks like. And here we are at the workstation. We're gonna click a quick update as always and go ahead and sign in. We're gonna begin a fast transaction for two people. And we do have our packages here on the side. And we have our $100 package, which rings up at 100 and the $150 package, which rings up just fine. And then if we ring up any of the items, we can see our condiments work just as intended. We can ring up as many as these as we want. And this is the only disadvantage of using this method. Um, you know, we don't have direct control to say if somebody ordered the $100 package, then they're limited to only three items. But if the servers don't pay attention and they ring in four, then there is no control on the computer to tell them, hey, you cannot do that. The only control will have to be in the kitchen and in the reports. And it works exactly the same for the drinks. But the good part about this system is that we can send this ticket and then we can reopen it. And then if we need to make any of the changes, we can. And then if we need to add more items later on, we can as well. So I can ring up more items and send again and so on. So everything works as we intended it to do. Shamir, thank you very much for your question. I hope this helps you program your two packages. If you have any programming questions or you would like to see any programming featured in a future video, please leave them in the comments below. I read all of them and I appreciate it very much. And that's pretty much everything I have for you guys today. If you are interested in joining our free Facebook group, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. The community is awesome and super active and very, very helpful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.